امروز ملت ایران یک ملت صاحب فناوری هسته است و کسانی که با ملت ما میخوان حرف بزنن باید بدانن که با کدوم ملت دارن حرف میزنن اگر هم الان ندانن به زودی مجددن زمانی که سرشون به سنگ خواهد خورد From Tehran to the United Nations in New York President Ahmadinejad expresses his distaste for America and the international community. Media outlets line up for interviews with a defiant Iranian president, as daily news reports focus on Iran's nuclear program. American and Western leaders have often labeled the Iranian regime a sponsor of terror and a violator of human rights. Yet, for more than 30 years, America has misread the guiding principles of the Islamic Republic. What happens when a regime that openly desires the destruction of nations obtains nuclear weapons? The world may suffer unthinkable consequences. Iran's nuclear program is not an isolated problem. It is the final component of an extreme doctrine that has held Iran's citizens and the international community hostage for more than 30 years. The threat America and the world face from Iran today can be traced back to 1978. At the time, Iran was ruled by the Shah, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, a longtime ally of the United States. Iran is an island of stability in one of the more troubled areas of the world. The Shah was rapidly modernizing Iran introducing secularism and capitalism to a traditional Muslim society. There always is uh, this tug of war uh, in the Middle East between authenticity and uh, what you might call cultural collaboration with the West. Within Iran, the Shah was viewed as an uncompromising dictator. Growing distaste quickly turned into public outrage. Rightists and leftists from all across Iranian society, including Marxists, communists, and religious elements, formed a popular revolution to overthrow the Shah. And one man emerged as the leader of the movement. Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, living in exile in the suburbs of Paris, had been one of the main opponents of the Shah since the 1960s, and offered promises of political freedom. Khomeini was able to ride this, this wave of, you know, an enormous dissatisfaction, frustration, and expectation. They had no idea who he was, but when they began to see that he had power, they naturally began to gravitate towards him. After months of violent street protests, the U.S. withdrew its support of the Shah. Now we know the United States has passed the word to the Shah of Iran. It's time for him to leave his country. The fact that Jimmy Carter did not support the Shah in the time of his difficulties actually signaled to the Iranian people that the Shah's rule was over. In February 1979, the Shah left Iran, never to return. Two weeks later, Khomeini triumphantly arrived in Tehran as a hero. For Khomeini, the Shah was gone, but the Western influence he promoted was still present across Iranian society. 
بعدال اون یه چیزی خیال میکنن که در قرب خبری است بدانن که در قرب خبری نیست جز جنایت America would soon become Khomeini's next adversary. In their perception, the leading power of the world of the unbelievers is the United States. And the United States is therefore inevitably the main enemy. America is the great Satan because from their point of view, it is the enemy of God. We are Satan whispering into the ears of the Muslims trying to tempt them away from Islam. For years during our school in Iran, our teachers, and the government, they told us the Americans are devils. They want to kill us. Every morning, they uh, forced us to just chant death to America. <laughs> It didn't take long for the regime to discover a model for fighting against American interests. The U.S. Embassy in Tehran has been invaded and occupied by Iranian students. The Americans inside have been taken prisoner. Just nine months after Khomeini's return, several hundred students stormed the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, taking 63 Americans hostage. امریکایی هم که در اونجا بوده گرفتن و اون لانه فساد را به دست آوردن و امریکا هم هیچ غلطی نمیتونه بود. The first major American mistake was in the handling of the hostage crisis. At that time, the response was, to put it mildly, feeble. Everything that Carter did showed to the Iranian minds weakness. They said, oh boy, America's weak. Let's push on. I don't know how much longer we can sit here and uh, see them kept captive while the uh, situation around them uh, does uh, deteriorate. Ma az dekhalat nizami nemi tarsim. On chizi ki ma ra mi tarsanat va bastagi farhangi ist. The crisis stretched on for 444 days, emboldening Khomeini and further strengthening his popular support. The hostages were not released until January 20th, 1981. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. Khomeini understood that Ronald Reagan would be a different kind of a president than Jimmy Carter had been. There probably was a measure of wariness about his approach to Iran and an understanding that he would not put up with the assault on American sovereignty that Jimmy Carter had put up with. Some 30 minutes ago, the planes bearing our prisoners left Iranian airspace and are now free. 